Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my November wrap-up. I've never done a wrap-up video before, so I guess we'll see how this goes. But the general idea is that I'm going to take you through the books I've read in November, tell you a little about each of them, and then I'm going to let you know which, were, which one was my favourite and which one was my least favourite. So, with that in mind, as I said, I've never done one of these before, so I've never really thought about how much I read in a month. I can't even hold this. Um, this is what I read in November, so there are 13 books here, and a bunch of these actually, I'll start with those, I'll start with the Young Writer of the Year Award books, because I've kind of talked about these on my channel already. Basically, the Young Writer of the Year Award is ran by the Sunday Times and Peter's Phrases and Dunlop, which is a literary agency, and I sit on a shadow panel with four other bloggers, and they sent us the five books for this year's award shortlist. And in November I read them all. So I've posted full reviews, or I'm in the process of posting full reviews for each of these on my channel. But I'll go through them anyway. I just want to give you a quick overview of all of these things. So first up we've got The Lucky Ones by Julianne Pacheco. Now I gave this one, my rating varies between 4 and 5 stars. But now my final rating here, I think is, it's got to be a 5 stars. Because just the more I think about this book, the more I want to reread it. Basically, it's a set of short stories, although some people call it a novel. That should give you an idea of how experimental it is, I guess. It's very ethereal, it's very dreamlike, hallucinatory, but there are kind of common themes that tie it all together and you get to see different sides of different characters through time. That's the best way I can describe it, to be honest. It's one of those you should just read. You can't really um, do it justice by trying to explain what it's about. But I heartily recommend this one, and yeah. Now we're going to the opposite end of the spectrum. This one is Sally Rooney, Conversations with Friends. And this one I really didn't like, although a lot of the other panel members did like. I think, really, I'm just not the right target audience. It describes itself as kind of a bit like a feminist book, a bit like a rom-com. And to be honest, I didn't find it to be funny, so there was no kind of comedy there. There was romance, but it was kind of this twisted romance. It was this weird love rectangle between these four equally awful people that all just tried to manipulate each other. And then when things go wrong, you as the reader are expected to feel sorry for them. But I'm kind of glad that all of these characters had a miserable time. I gave this one a 3 out of 5, and uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Then we've got The End of the Day by Claire North. So this one follows a chap called Charlie and Charlie is the harbinger of death. So that means his job is to go to people uh, ahead of death basically as a warning or as a sign. Sometimes you can uh, change your ways in time and death will pass you by. Charlie also goes to see the death of ideas as well like the death of the American dream. Unfortunately, it's quite often, it's um, quite repetitive, which in a way is good because Charlie looks at, that's his outlook on his own job, he, he's sick of death basically, and you get sick of reading about death in a way. Um, now Claire North, I've heard a lot of great things about the first 15 lives of Harry August, and I might read that at some point, but from what I've heard and from what the other people on the panel said, this one isn't as good as that one. Still, I thought it was quite interesting. It did ask kind of a few interesting questions of the reader. I would say proceed, but proceed with caution. It's probably a 3.5 stars. Uh, then we have The Lauras by Sarah Taylor. And this is the tale of an androgynous kid called Alex. And Alex is Ma. Basically, it hops backwards and forwards through time between the two of them being on a road trip. And as they're on this road trip, kind of Alex learns more about who they are. And meanwhile, Alex's ma kind of talks about the past a lot more. What's interesting is that you never get an answer of to whether Alex is a boy or a girl. And I think that's important. It's a non-binary thing anyway. And that's kind of explained and shown throughout the book in terms of both the way it's written in terms of not using kind of gender pronouns, but also some of the situations that Alex and Ma find themselves in. And uh, I thought this was very beautifully written. It was well done as well. And this one is again a 4.5 or a 5 stars for me. It was um, very much recommended. Even if it doesn't seem like your kind of thing, I think you'll like it. I certainly found um, it wasn't preachy or anything like that. And I found it very easy, even though the main character was an androgynous child uh, and a well, a woman getting towards a midlife crisis, I suppose. I didn't feel put off by that. I could pretty much relate to them both. I said with that book, actually, what's interesting is that the whole androgyny part of the storyline doesn't feel crowbarred in. It feels kind of almost like an aside, but a planned aside, if that makes sense. It's not, um, it's not vital to the story. It's just something that's happening in the background, and it works really well. 
And this is the last of the Young Writer Award books, and this is Outlandish Night, The Byzantine Life of Stephen Runciman by Minu Dinshaw. So as you can see, this is a real chunky thing. I actually kind of, I'm kind of glad I read this in November because a lot of people were doing non-fiction November and this is non-fiction. And this basically, um, it explores the life of Stephen Runciman through things like diary entries and his old letters. Stephen Runciman was kind of one of the old school English gentlemen. He was an historian specialising in uh, the Byzantine Empire. He was also a writer himself. He was made things like, a, he was a Sir Stephen Runciman, for example. He lived, lived a very interesting life. He went to school with George Orwell. He knew um, Elizabeth Bowen Lyons. I think that's how you say it. The Queen Mum, he knew her. So it was an interesting read, but it was also kind of dry. And to be honest, they, it, I only picked it up because of the awards. If I was going to read a piece of nonfiction, it would not usually be this. And I do like reading nonfiction, but... Um, this was a bit much and almost a little bit specialist. I think if you don't know who Stephen Runciman is, I don't know why you'd want to read it. But still, I gave it a 3.5 stars. So those are the Young Writer of the Year award books. That's these lot. We'll put these down. My phone's going off as well. What else have we got? Um, these come in a set, so I'll look at these ones quickly. These are the, um, the, the new takes on the Ladybird books. So we've got How It Works, The Grandparent, How It Works, The Cat, and how it works the dad and these are all by um, it's two guys it's J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris I know they're guys I'm not just assuming that it's Jason Hazley I think and I can't remember the other guy's name they only uh, use their initials in these books for some reason but so they're all kind of just funny takes like little images and let me read you some let me read you a random page from each of them so the grandparent all their working lives, Marie and Dennis dreamed of a retirement where they could spend a little more time together. Unfortunately, they are spending a lot more time together, which is driving them up the wall. So that's the Ladybird book of the grand how it works, the grandparent. For the cat, let's have a look at this one. Cats like to hide in boxes. Imhotep's cat, Tibbles Ra, has hidden in this sarcophagus and will not come out. Imhotep asks his pyramid contractor whether it would be easier to leave Tibbles Ra in there and convince everyone that cat burials are a thing now. And the Ladybird Book of the Dad. For a birthday treat, Steve has taken his son Jake to Edgepaston to see England play Pakistan in the third test. Steve knows Jake likes throwing grapes and knocking breadsticks off his high chair, so he is sure they will have lots of fun watching six hours of cricket together. So they do keep the delightful Britishness of the original Ladybird books. So uh, each of these, I just gave them four out of five. I mean, they're nothing deep. They are humorous books, but they are also a lot of fun. Now we've got, this one is one that I got sent. This is C.G. Harris, Light and Dark, and this is 21 short stories. Um, now C.G. Harris is an indie author. Um, you can tell that he's kind of an older gentleman in terms of when you read the stories, but in a good way, it's kind of, it, you can tell that the person that's writing them has been, is a, uh, you know, is a man of the world, has, you know, has seen things, has travelled, has learned lots, kind of knows history, has read a lot of books, that kind of thing, and it comes across in the writing, which I thought was great. There are two really interesting short stories in here that I would recommend, and they are um, Lighthouse Eddie, which is almost, it's a horror story basically, but it's a kind of a suspenseful horror story. It's a bit like, um, reminds me of something like The Turn of the Screw or something like that in terms of the writing style. And uh, Duel in the Bois de Vincennes, which is uh, about two Frenchmen having a duel over a woman. And in that one I saw the ending coming way before the ending, but in a way I'm glad I did. I think it had to happen in that way. They're all very much written in kind of a classical style, which makes them a joy to read. And so I gave this one four out of five stars. Very good for an indie book. This one is The Oatmeal, How to Tell If Your Cat Is Plotting to Kill You. And this is just, again, lots of little cartoons about cats. My, my girlfriend gave me this one, actually. Um, there's a long part in this where this kind of covers the cat in the office as well, which is... <laughs> I mean, it's just, just great, you know. You're off to a good start, buddy. And uh, yeah, this is written by Matthew Inman, but he's the guy who owns the Oatmeal, the website. So if you're familiar with that, you'll know roughly what to expect. Takes, it took me maybe an hour to read this, if that, no, half an hour, I reckon. And also, it comes with this poster that you can take out of the book and hang up on your wall if you want. 
I gave that one another four out of five stars as well, I believe. I'd be interested to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of these and what your thoughts are, but also how you rate books. Because I used to rate them out of uh, 10, and so it was a lot easier for me to kind of give ratings, I think. And now I switched to five stars because of Amazon and Goodreads, basically. And now I find I default to four. Everything is a four if it's a professional quality book. A couple of poetry ones. We've got 10 Poems of Kindness, selected and introduced by Jackie K. This is one that I was sent for free. Now this is a very like low budget, it's almost like a poetry chat book, um, but having said that, it, it is really beautiful and it's very cheap, I think it's on sale for £3, and it's just 10 poems inside, it's dedicated to the memory uh, of a lad called Felix who tragically killed himself when he was about 17 I think, and so yeah, Felix Alexander, Felix's campaign of kindness, and it's got some great poems from everyone from like Sylvia Plath to um, I think Kate Tempest is in here, yes she is. And Jackie Kay herself and uh, what's cool about this is this comes with an envelope so you can actually use it as like a greetings card and send it to people which I thought was a really good idea it's cheap it's cheerful but it's important as well and um, I think it does a great job I think it's what it is so I gave that one a four out of five as well do you see a theme here this one here is the Valley Press Anthology of Yorkshire Poetry edited by Miles Salter and Oz Hardwick and again, this one is um, one that I was sent. I actually won, won a competition where I won about 10 poetry books. And I've met Miles Salter. He also runs York Literature Festival. And I was kind of, I was invited to that a little while ago. I even shot a video which will be being re-uploaded to this channel at some point. And this one I really like because it's very good quality. But also it's about 100 odd poems. All about different parts of Yorkshire. We've got like Carol Ann Duffy and all of this stuff. A poem there called Nobody Hurries, Nobody Hurries in Harrogate. Praise poem for Yorkshire puddings, Barnsley Boundary Walk. Um, you know, it's it's great. It does a great job of capturing Yorkshire as a place in words. And um, I have a lot of time for this. This really depends on the kind of person you are, but for a poetry book, this is very good. I would say 4.5 out of 5 for this one. And the last one is Firestarter by Stephen King, which I filmed a full review of, which isn't up yet. Some of these books do have reviews up, and I'll try to remember to leave links below, but if not, check my channel, and just keep your eyes peeled. I'm reviewing the ones that I really want to talk about. Some of these, like the, the one about the cats, for example, I can just cover that in this end-of-month wrap-up, whereas stuff like Firestarter, I really want to go in-depth. Suffice to say, it was great, I loved it. The more I look back on it, the more I think it deserves. I think I gave it a four or 4.5 on my uh, website, but I'm giving it a five out of five here, because it was fucking awesome. Charlie, man, Charlie. It's basically about a little girl with pigtails who has um, the power to start fires, and how that then translates into the government trying to capture her and all this stuff, and then lots of fires like chickens exploding um it's an early stephen king release as well i think this was published in like 82 or something like that it was definitely first published in 1980 so this came out nine years before i was born and i i think it's held up to the test of time and there's a great sense of dread from the government as well throughout this book that um, makes it very difficult to put down in fact i read it over two or three days so anyway, that's what I read in November. It's not quite the end of November, but um, I need to f edit all of this and whatnot. And I'm currently reading Different Seasons by Stephen King, which is another thick old book. And that's, I'm not going to finish that by the end of this month. So I will uh, talk about that in my December one. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed this and uh, to let me know with a comment if you've read any of these, what you thought. As I said, I'm doing more reviews now, so there'll be more reviews coming soon, and my hauls and all of this kind of stuff. I'm really enjoying booktubing at the moment, and I want to say a big thank you to everybody who's watching my videos, to everyone who's watched this one for this far. I mean, I'm up to 15 minutes of filming now, although I'm sure it'll come in at about 10 with editing. But thank you very much for your support, uh, all of your likes, your comments, all of that stuff. It really does mean the world to me. You know, I, I'm really enjoying taking part in BookTube and kind of being part of a wider community and watching you guys' videos as well. So, um, you know, just thanks for being accepting, really, and thanks for letting me come in and join the fun because it, it's a great thing to do. It's a great place to be. So, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.